Okay, we're going to try and edit this image. Um, I'm going to basically try my normal workflow. This was an, uh, um, an award-winning image of Anna Rose called Dark Statue. So this is the complete RAW file unedited in uh, Lightroom. And um, I'm just going to uh, bring down the highlights. And I'm going to open up the shadows. I'm going to open up the blacks and uh, I am going to crop it. I'm going to crop it square. Something like that. And hit enter. And I'm not worried about the color temperature because I'm going to make this a black and white image. But you can see that this is a grey paper, but it has come in uh, slightly blue. So my camera has seen it as a cool co uh, color temperature. And you can see that temperature is 3950, um, whereas normally daylight would be uh, you know 5000, above 5000. So, um, but as I say, I'm not worried about that. Um, so it's just simply photo. Edit in Photoshop CC, and uh, because this is recording, it may take a moment for the image to actually open in um, Adobe Photoshop. So there we go. Um, first thing you've got to do is look at the image and decide what actually needs done here. So we've got a few problems down here on the uh, uh, the cylinder that she's standing on. So my workflow is Command J, which is a duplicate layer. And um, I'm going to uh, zoom in to 100%. All I did was double click the magnifying glass here and that brings me into 100%. So I need to get rid of all these uh, problems with the old battered um, cylinder that I use. Uh, so the spot healing brush is normally good for this. And uh, I use it. I found that it works better with a hard edge. So up here, hardness 100%. Um, you might think it would work better with a soft edge, but I have found it works better with a hard edge. And uh, don't ask me why, don't ask me to explain, but that's the way it works. So I'm going to leave that top lid edge for the moment. I'm just going to try and tidy up the, uh, the cylinder itself at the moment. So even a large problem area like that is not a problem to this healing brush. I'm just going to make the brush slightly smaller. So there will still be a wee bit of tidying up to do. Uh, there are so many ways to do it uh, at the end, cloning or whatever. But that that lid there would have to be uh, would have to be fixed. So the beauty of working on a duplicate layer is that you can um, you can turn it off and on and see what it, what exactly you've done there. So once you're happy with it, flatten image, and then next step, Command J for another duplicate layer. And now we're looking for blemishes on the uh, model's skin. So there's a little scar there. So again, just using this spot healing brush and uh, any little blemishes that you see. And there are not many on, uh, on Anna Rose. Just clicking the, uh, the spot healing brush. So 
So this is possibly a wee bit bright here and likewise this hand is a bit bright so as you're going around the image you're looking for other areas that you might have to fix. Um, see in there in the hair that might be a wee clip um, so just getting rid of that. Okay so if you're happy with that flatten image. <clears throat> Now I do like to add a vignette to pictures, so I do that manually. I just use the rectangular marquee tool. I draw it out like so. I then select inverse. I then feather it, select modify feather. Quite a high number, 395. Don't ask me why. Command C, Command J. That copies it and puts it onto a new layer. And then I go image adjustment exposure and I bring it down. Um, <coughs> one on exposure turn that off and on there's the vignette happy with that if you're happy with it 100 percent you'll be even happier at 70 um, and flatten image one thing i do have is a little action that i've made called it's just brightness 10 percent <coughs> it makes a duplicate layer with a brightness of 10 percent so underneath this black mask i know that the uh, the picture is brightened by 10%, so B for brush, 30% opacity, and I'm just going to paint over the hair and the face there, just to bring a wee bit of attention in to that part of the image. Now this is the softest brush available in Photoshop, hardness 0%. So if I click on the mask, I can't brush any softer than that, but what I can do is use blur on the mask so i have a radius of 55 in there i'm going to blur the mask i'm going to blur it again i'm going to blur it again and i'm going to blur it again and maybe one last time so now if we go back to the picture we can turn that off and on and there's the effect now there may be a slight hint of haloing around here let's just check so yeah, it's maybe very slight. So if I filter that again, Gaussian blur, and maybe one more time. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And flatten image. Um, <clears throat> turning the image black and white, Command J, filter, Nick software, Silver FX Pro. And Silver FX Pro comes with a lot of gimmicky presets. Uh, by and large you want to avoid them. There are a couple that you might like but I just go by and large with the neutral. I might add a wee bit of structure and um, yeah I'm happy enough with that. Click OK. Yeah happy with that. So flatten image. And uh, I do have a set of actions which include uh, a sepia tone. I'm just going to press play, and this brings in a sepia tone 18%. If you want it more, make it more. If you want it less, make it less. Flatten image. And I do like a wee piece of software here called Imaginomic. Um, so, Imaginomic Portraiture. Um, it is really quite an aggressive filter, but I have devised a way of making it uh, really quite subtle and uh, that is a one click wonder there so i'm going to make that 70 percent opacity quite like that and flatten image now you uh, i might do a wee bit of body shaping here just on the wee bump on the back so command j filter uh, liquify And click OK. So again, because this is on a duplicate layer, I mean that's very subtle just there. Um, just bringing that down a fraction, flatten image. Um, now you could spend ages dodging and burning the skin tone of the model to really make her pop off the uh, screen, but I prefer to do things um, uh, with methods that are more more simple and straightforward and uh, quick. So Command J, and I'm going to use a filter in the next software. So 
So just waiting for that to open. Here we go, and uh, so just look at the model skin. Don't worry about all this horrible haloing and all these horrible artifacts coming into the background. Just look at the model skin, and uh, we are going to apply this. We're applying it to a duplicate layer. And then we're going to mask it out and paint it back in again so that we don't get those horrible halos. Halos are a complete no-no. Uh, you would fail an L panel uh, if it had these horrible halos. So Alt and Mask. So underneath this mask is a uh, beautiful Dodgen burn effect on the uh, model skin. So I'm going to paint this in at about 70% uh, opacity. Making sure not to go over the edge because if I do, I'm going to bring in a halo. And of course, if you do, you just simply change your color um, to black uh, and restore the mask. So I'm not painting at 100% opacity here. I'm painting at 70% to make this slightly quicker. Normally, I would paint this sort of stuff in at um, uh, 30 odd percent and build it up. Some places might get more than others, um, but just for the purposes of this, um, I am really just trying to make it as quick as possible, just to show you, you don't have to spend hours on your images. So let's turn this off and on and see what we've got. So look at the, uh, the I mean, that just makes the image much more three dimensional. Uh, I still think that the face could be brightened a wee bit more. Um, so I'm gonna flatten that. And then I'm going to go back into my action uh, brightness 10%. And uh, do, 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 there we are. Press play. So if I B for brush, 30% opacity. And just paint over Anna Rose's face there. And I'm going to make that a bigger brush and give it one hit there. And remember what we did with the uh, blurring the mask. So I'm just going to blur that. And I'm going to blur it again. And blur it again. And blur it again. And now let's see. Off and on. Yeah, how subtle is that? So just make it 70% and flatten. Um, in terms of uh, final touches um, in color FX, you've got to draw the viewer's attention to where you want them to look. And uh, although Anna Rose herself is obviously very central in this composition, you can fine tune it um, using this dark and light and center. So um, the beauty of this is that it uh, allows you to, to uh, darken and lighten certain parts of the image and place the center. So I'm placing the center here and that is uh, making that part brighter and the rest darker. So it does what it says on the tin, dark and light and center. Um, so if you like it at 100%, you'll like it even more at 70%. So I've just made that 70% opacity and uh, flatten image. So the last thing I need to do there is, um, well, of course, I need to, to, I was going to say sharpen, but I need to fix this first of all. Now, this could be a wee bit tricky. Um, I'm going to, of course, do uh, Command J so that I have the uh, duplicate layer. If I mess this up, I can... Uh, uh, just delete it and I'm back to where I started. Um, I'm going to try a little, I'll do a rectangular marquee and I'm going to uh, select and I'm going to go Command C to copy that, Command J to put it on its own layer, Command T to transform it. Uh, so I'm going to move it up and then right click and warp it. So I'm just making sure that this essentially covers the uh, the problem areas and click OK and might just need to come down a bit. So if I just simply uh, 
We'll use the down arrow. I can bring that down and I then hit Alt and Mask, B for brush and zero for 100% opacity. And I'm going to really zoom in on this. And uh, this is a soft edged brush. So if you make a, a, a slip, uh, it's very easy to correct this just by I'm painting with a, a white brush through a black mask here. If I make a mistake or I want to go back, I just paint with a black brush to restore it. So, um, Hitting X on the keyboard makes black my color, and I can just restore that the edge. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with that. Obviously, I uh, would absolutely perfect it um, on uh, uh, the actual image for competition. Um, X painting in white. and flatten image. So uh, the last thing I would do is sharpen it. Um, I do like to use the uh, NYX software output sharpener. Inkjet Auto, Luster Paper, and I'm at 100%. Now this is an unsharpened raw file, completely unsharpened. Um, and uh, the resolution of my printer is 1440 by 1440. I've made this 2400 by 2400. Um, and at 100%, I find it's just absolutely perfect for the size of my images and the print. I'm just making the opacity of that 70% flatten image. That image is absolutely good to go. And um, as I say, it has won several Fiat gold medals uh, during the summer period. Uh, um, in several countries so th there it is um, dark statue starring Annie, Anna Rose and uh, no tricks held back one thing I forgot to mention was I did want to bring down that little highlight just on the hip there and um, maybe the brightness of the hand now I do use a fairly advanced technique for that it's based on luminosity masks um, and uh, I'll not really explain this but um, I'm going to uh, basically select the uh, the highlights. I'm going to put them into a curves adjustment layer in uh, multiply blending mode and uh, that of course affects the whole picture but um, I'm going to put it into a group and apply a mask and uh, I'm then going to paint um, just in those areas where I want to uh, bring down the highlights. Now because I've made a selection I don't need to be careful about where I'm brushing because this is only going to affect anywhere where there's highlights. So if there's an area that I just of highlight that I just want to uh, to bring down. So on this group if I turn it off and on if you just look here on the hand and here on the hip as I turn that off and on you can see the effect of that. Let's have a look at the mask that I just painted. So that's a mask. That is not the picture. That is a mask based on luminosity um, uh, selections and luminosity masks. So quite happy with that flattened image. And uh, there we go. Anna Rose is good to go. Thank you.